Sure. So I'm de- I'm declaring this. The la- the three weeks that follow Labor Day is the mullet of weather for Maine. You have to shoot for the mullet. You got you got activities in the daytime, campfires at night. All right. Too dark. You ready to go? Yes. Nick. Nick. Don't leave me. <laughs> yes, ready to go. Where are we headed? Moody Beach. Let's roll. Chop, chop. You forgot your wallet. Beeline. Came in that side. And of course, my pump is on this side. And look. Sorry, out of service. So you just got to do what you got to do. Diesel was not out of service on this side. And thankfully, it reached. All right, after seven hours on the road, we are back at Moody Beach. Yep, we, uh, we went all the way up the East Coast. Now we've come all the way back down. Uh, we are in southern Maine, Moody Beach, right near Wells, a gun quit. Got it right that time. And uh, we're gonna be here a week. Then we start our trek down south. And it's it's unbelievable like how fast this year has gone already. It's when you're hopping from site to site, it just feels like it's it's just rolling by. I can't believe it's fall already. And so, but we have a, a good site, we're in the front. So I don't have to do the whole jump to a new, a new site uh, after somebody leaves. So that's nice. And uh, yeah, we're just here for the week. I'll tell you what, what we're going to do. We've learned so much on this trip to Maine. So what we want to do in this video is actually share uh, some of the things that we've learned with you guys. So if you're thinking about coming to Maine, this is going to be helpful. Give me one thing you've learned while here in Maine. They do not have billboards. <laughs> That's so random. I didn't, I didn't think you were going to say that. <laughs> thought it was going to be like, come see the <laughs> lighthouses. Okay, so <laughs> one thing they I learned. They don't have billboards, okay. <laughs> one thing I learned about Maine that's not related to billboards is um, there is a ton of lighthouses but you cannot see them all by land. You have to take boats or planes mm. to see them. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so I just learned that there are no billboards in Maine. <laughs> so <laughs> along with billboards, there's really no fast food restaurants. <laughs> no. <laughs> so if you're going to come to Maine, you're either going to buy groceries or you're going to go out to eat and it's going to be local. Local um, owned restaurants. Next, second fun fact is um, most of Maine is covered by national, uh, uh, covered by forest, um, but like 78% of that forest is privately owned. It's not public land. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. And it's really like the coast. The coast is what's like built up. Yeah. And the rest of it is. Yep. So if you go on a hike and it's not part of the national park or state park, you have to ask permission from the owners to go hike because it's not public. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. This is Fort William and then the Portland Head Lighthouse is this direction of the park. So when you come to the park, you have to pay for parking. It's two dollars an hour. Up till 6 p.m. Up to 6 p.m. We came right at 6 p.m. so we didn't have to pay. Mm -hmm. We always do that so we can get free parking. So we get free parking. Of course. No, it's actually because we work and then we come here. Yeah. <laughs> you, have to, you have to explore after your work day. Um, anyways, so another thing we learned was parking is always two to four dollars an hour or twenty five dollars for the day, depending on the season, things right. like that. And every parking lot has a different app. Yes. They, none of them line up. Like it's iPark Park or Parky or Park Mobile. Like none of them line up. They're all different. <laughs> so we just started using the card at the machine instead of downloading all the apps. Right.
since the day of work done. Today was actually uh, payday for Cindy. So what that means is that every other week she has to do payroll and it takes all day long. And uh, so we can't really explore until, until after that. We want to keep telling you guys a little bit about what we've learned uh, while we were here in Maine because there's definitely a lot to kind of unpack uh, from our time up here and we want to share that information with you guys so we're going to go explore it's our last couple of days up here in Maine and um, let you guys know what we've learned and grab some dinner we are currently at Kinnebunk Beach it is about 20 minutes from the campground uh, if you're staying in Moody Beach about 20 minutes north and it's so pretty I mean you got this cove right here you see some rainstorms out in the background um, way out there but on this side, right behind the camera, you got the ocean. I mean, and the waves are just coming in, rolling. You see a little rain down that way too, but you come over to this side and it's just as pretty. Like the, everywhere we look in Maine, this is the word I have to say. I, the, the only word I can really use, beautiful. We spent two weeks in uh, Moody Beach before and we didn't make it to Kinnebunk Beach. So we are here checking it out today. What did you learn about me? You got a mosquito on your forehead. God, I, I mean, even when my arms are covered, bring bug spray. That's what I'm gonna say. Bring bug spray um, when you come to Maine. Because mosquitoes- <laughs> The deep woods of bug Yeah, the spray. deep woods off is uh, what is helpful. And that was the only thing that worked when we were in the UP. But for me, like at the campground, it was horrible. Like they were landing next to my like mosquito rid bracelets. <laughs> I was getting bites beside the stupid bracelet. He took two bracelets and made them into an anklet and his his leg was still covered. <laughs> yeah, so bring bug spray. I mean, that's anywhere, but definitely up here. Especially if you're bothered by mosquitoes. Like, I, they don't bother me, so I don't need bug spray. No, I'm but, <laughs> but they bothered you, so. <laughs> the other thing I'll say is when we went really far up north, uh, we were really close to the next time zone, the, the Atlantic time zone, actually never been that far east now all of maine is in the same time zone the eastern time but we must have been so close to the atlantic time zone because our, our phone sitting at dinner was flipping between 4 30 and 5 30 so we were like losing an hour and it was just kind of teeter-totting back and forth yeah it was pretty neat so that was pretty cool never been that far east and then the other thing i'll say is the carriers uh so if you're up really far uh you're going to get really close to canada and because you're close to Canada, Verizon and AT&T really don't have service right there. You're going to be picking up an extended carrier service. Yeah, it says Bell on yeah. the, on the uh, network. So you may want to just check with your carriers before you travel that far and make sure you're not going to get any like overcharges, overcharges. or anything like that. Or, or roaming charges. The speeds were really fast. Like we had like 160 download. Which is unheard of. Yeah. Nick, Nick was pretty excited because he could game. <laughs> yes. 160 download. It was like 60 upload. It was just, it was really fast speeds. Yeah, no problem working. No problem uh, connecting. Nope. But we were worried about that. And as long as you got that extended carrier and you have full service, uh, it was pretty good for us. Uh, when we got close to Canada, we actually received a text message that said um, with our plan, we weren't going to be charged. Welcome to Canada. Yeah. You're an extended network and you're not going to be charged due to your carrier plan. Right. So check with your plan, check with your provider, because you may be the same. Yep. There you go. A couple more things we've learned. to Federal Jack's uh, like pub. But I wanted to share one more thing that I've been uh, thinking about that we've learned since we've been here in Maine. People are awesome. The people have been so amazing. I don't think, like we haven't had a bad experience with anybody that we've run not into. Not with waitresses, not with business owners, not with just complete strangers walking down the street. Nothing. Like everybody's been nice. And we have met so many um, full-time families while we were up here. Like. It's just so cool to, once you get to learn that little network of uh, people. You, you build a community yeah. of people, and so it doesn't matter where you're at, um, you you might meet up with one of them again, and that's pretty cool because we actually we met a family um, in 
Acadia and then we ran it back into them up in Robinson and then yep. we so the Ash family yep. the Kennedys and switch it up we ran into those guys again hitch the hitch hitch the hitch um, Debbie and the Pat yes Debbie and Pat we met last year in Indiana like yeah, in, yeah. they just happen like to our, be in Maine. It's like a one year anniversary <laughs> of meeting. We got to meet up again in Maine. <laughs> yeah. And then of course Pat and Michelle that we met at the campground. Pat and Michelle. Like I there's really just so many again. people. We should be able to meet them again in Arizona. In um, in four weeks of being up here, like we have met so, so many, many people and got to hang out with so many uh it's truly a blessing to be able really to is. say we we have we we have we we went from being strangers to being really close friends yep. in, in a matter of weeks, which is pretty cool. So if you get to come up, come up to Maine, you know, be thinking about that. Like, come out of your bubble. Yes. Yep. <laughs> and for everybody we got to hang out with and got to see while we were up here, we yes. really appreciate it and we loved hanging out with each and every yes. one of Thank you. Thank y'all for letting us hang out and chat. Yep. <laughs> we are still talking about things we have learned in Maine because there has been a ton of things we've learned. Well, I mean, some of them are just fun learning. Other ones are necessity learning, like take a coat with you wherever you go because it's probably going to get cold. Especially if you go into the ocean. And then for the whale watch, they said it can be up to 20 to 25 degrees cooler. On the water. On the water. So even if it's like no, 70 and, degrees and out. And that's not including the breeze. The, you're looking at like 45 to 50 degrees. Yeah. They said wear layers. Yes. So you know even, have a jacket they even recommend hats and gloves <laughs> that's actually a good segue into my learning which was uh the perfect time to come to maine and we've heard this from a couple of people now and we've experienced it ourselves because and i'll tell you why in just a second but after right after labor day for about two to three weeks you have probably the most opportune time one you're starting to see leaves change and two, the crowds start to die down from the sub summer tourism and the leaf chasers aren't there yet. Nope. And so if, so if you're thinking about coming to Maine, I would plan it. Like, I think this has been the perfect time. I would plan it for this again. Yep. So we were, we were here at this area at the, at, at the very beginning of, of that season of that two to three weeks. Yeah. We were here August 29th, August 30th. Mm -hmm. Yep. Like so right before Labor Day, we were here. Yep. And then Ogunquit and all them was super crazy. Packed. Like it was packed. Then the and holiday then came. Holiday came. And then we left and went to Acadia. Yep. And it was still a little crowded there, but only in the areas to be expected. Not not to what we've been hearing though. No. Because people came people were there the week after us. Yeah. And they were like, It's crazy busy. And yeah, like we can't find parking anywhere. It wasn't that like we we found parking for our dually. <laughs> <laughs> in yep. a lot of in a lot of the parking lots now granted your your big hiking points yeah you know, they're, so they're they're going to be busy no matter what but that doesn't mean that you can't ride the, the um either the trolleys the trolleys or, or i think they recommend to either get there super early in the morning yep or go later in the evening after four or after four because everybody's going home for dinner yep the the rangers said to go after four if you if you can right um because it will be a less crowded so so there there's, there's tricks there's a to, couple tips to every, that. everywhere that you but go. So. I, I think the most opportune time has been like yep. since we've been here. And that was purely by accident because it's not like I did any research on this trip. <laughs> um, we like to wing it. <laughs> so if we come back to Maine, we'll probably other be than, like... Other than booking our campgrounds, yeah. there's no planning. <laughs> we'll, we'll probably shoot for this time period again. And then the weather is changing too. So you're starting to experience... The 50 degree nights, the 40 degree nights. But you, We've still been have, down... but you still have the 70 degree days. Yes. Like, and that, that's what's wonderful because you can go out and explore and it be warm and be nice and have the sun shine in to warm you up. And then all of a sudden the sun starts to go away and you have to grab a sweater or it's a like, jacket. It's like the mullet of, of weather. <laughs> you, got, you got activities in the daytime, campfires at night, business in the front, know. party in the back. <laughs> I was like, I don't know why you recommended that. Because it's it's business in the front, party in the back. You okay. got the you got the best of the both worlds. Yeah, it is the best of both worlds, and I've been loving it, and Nick's been loving it. Nick actually doesn't want to leave Maine. Yep. <laughs> so, so I'm de I'm declaring this: the la the three weeks that follow Labor Day is the mullet of weather for Maine. You have to shoot for the mullet. Yeah, it's just it's a beautiful time. 
The, and, and the further we got up north, the more we saw color in the trees. Yes, so we, we went all the way to the top of the east coast side, and the color in the trees were just magnificent. Like, it was beautiful. So bright. Orange and it yellows was, It was right before reds. they started getting back, you know, the trees go from green to bright, and then they start dulling out. So it was mm -hmm. in that bright stage uh, that we got to see that. And then we came back to this area, and they haven't changed yet. Not really. So. That little bush over here has yeah. been. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a couple trees here and there, but nothing like yeah. what we just experienced. So yeah, it, it really has been a great time. And now we're in hoodies and jackets because it's a little chilly today. It's like it's, 60 degrees. It's cloud clever. Yeah. One other thing about the timing of coming up here. The other thing is that if you're planning coming after Labor Day, yes, you have two to three weeks before it starts getting busy. But after that, but things, if, you, if you decide that you want to save for the leaf changes, it starts closing. <laughs> things start closing down. Like yeah. we went for, um, well, of all things, ice cream. Yes, it was closed. But there are other like restaurants that start shutting down because the tourism season is basically over. Yes, and so most of your campgrounds around here and the national parks, like we went to... This, this campground is closing on October 12th. 12th, the day after Indig Indigenous People Day. And again, know the tide. Because one of the things about going to Bar Harbor is that you can go out to the island. Bar at, Island. Bar Island at low tide, you can actually walk across uh, this area that kind of dries out. It's like a... It, it creates a path all the way across. Yeah, it's a gravel walkway all the way across. So knowing the tide, once again, is helpful even when going to Bar Harbor. Yeah. I will say uh, Bar Harbor is kind of like a city. So parking a dually is limited. L a little bit limited. So we took the um, Island Express or Island Explorer. I think it's Island Explorer. Um, Which starts at the visitor center yeah. of, of, of Acadia. It, they have routes that go all over the island. So you can look at their website and uh, figure out what route you want. And then you jump on that on the bus where you're wearing your mask and then get off where you want and then it's free so you don't have to worry about where you're, you don't have to worry about parking because the dually is parked at the visitor center which has plenty of parking and, it's and big spaces big spaces and then all you have to do is get back to the where it picks you back up at whenever you want because it comes every 15 minutes from <laughs> like eight o'clock in the morning to yep. like 6 30 at night okay so that is everything we've learned about Maine. Not everything. I, no, it's not everything. I, I'll take the back. There's there's plenty of stuff, but that's the big takeaways for us. But look, if if you're thinking about coming to Maine or, or driving up to Maine, you know, definitely you, you won't be disappointed. You're not. You're no. You're not. Not at all. And hopefully, some of this information in this video helps you out in planning for your trip. Make sure you plan your trip because otherwise, you're just going to be going around everywhere. Uh, don't be like us actually have an agenda, yep. but I hope you've enjoyed this video um, If you did make sure you give it a thumbs up if you really like it Make sure you subscribe if you're not already and ring the bell so you get notified when we release our next video It's been a while since we did this. It's been so long until the next strange adventure keep making your own <laughs>